Hi, this is Captain Drew Cavanaugh with Florida Inshore Fishing Charters and Mosquito Lagoon Site Fishing Charters located here in East Central Florida, New Smyrna Beach, Cocoa Beach, Edgewater, Oak Hill, uh, Daytona on the world famous Mosquito Lagoon, Indian River, and Ponce Inlet. Um, I started thinking a few days ago that when a lot of people go to hire a fishing guide, this is a new experience for them. There's so many questions and concerns. If you've never done this, it can be overwhelming. So I figured I'd put together a little uh, info video here on some basic tips on how to go about hiring a fishing guide and some basic questions that you want to ask them. Depending on where you're fishing or who you're doing it with, the type of fish in the state, location, uh, even whether it's here in the United States or in another country, uh, different laws and regulations will apply. So you'll have to break that down on an individual basis. Uh, some of the things I may go over here today are going to um, be focused on the Mosquito Lagoon, the National Park, and the Wildlife Refuge, which is you know uh, governed law uh, by the laws we follow by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the Department of Interior, the National Park Service, along with local, state, federal, Florida law. So one of the first things we're going to go over here is, and this is just a basic random list I put together, there's no rhyme or reason to it, is one, how many anglers can go? So if you're hiring a guide, ask them uh, your price, what does that include and how many anglers? Um, one or two, two or three, three or four, so on and so forth, uh, so from there. The second thing, are they insured and licensed? If you're in a four hire situation on a boat, the United States Coast Guard Homeland Security requires the captain to be a merchant mariner, have his Coast Guard license, which I am. Uh, but if you're wade fishing, if you meet a guy and you're just going to walk down a bank, depending on where you're at, Florida doesn't, you know, you don't have to do that because you're not in a vessel with them. Uh, so ask them if they're licensed. Next thing, are they insured? The state of Florida does not require you to carry insurance, but if you're in business, no matter what line of business you're in, it's good to have insurance. The National Park requires us out here working inside federal waters and on their property to be licensed and insured. Regardless if I was on their property and I not, I am licensed and insured uh, properly. It's business. If you go to hire a guy and he's not licensed and insured, eh, be careful with that. That's between you and them. Uh, also out here, the National Park, most refuges require what's called a CUA permit, Commercial Use Authorization. That's for us. Uh, there's unfortunately there's guides in this area that advertise they fish the mosquito lagoon they say this now whether they're out there or not i think they're just using that word the term mosquito lagoon as in a google search term and it's a bait and switch tactic because you if you're down here visiting and you've never been here before unless you know the specific geographic longitude latitude of the mosquito lagoon i could take you somewhere else and say you're on the mosquito lagoon i've also people also said hey i can call a puddle in my backyard a mosquito lagoon it's kind of a black ops tactic of bait and switch and it's not really fair so if you're fishing the mosquito lagoon or the refuge here and you're concerned ask your guide do you have your cua permit and is it current and you can always go to the canaveral national seashore website and uh, or call law enforcement over here and say hey i want to go out with so and so are they legally allowed to go out here you won't get in trouble but if you're stopped your trip could be cut short uh, and it's just not fair. It's not fair to you. Um, local state licenses uh, down here in Florida, if you're saltwater fishing with a captain or for a higher situation, we're required to supply your licenses. Uh, um, tipping, uh, that's between you and them. Sure, tips are always nice in any line of work. What, who's to say that? That's, that's your call. I don't even want to go there on that. I'm, I'm kind of strange. It feels weird when I see a website and it says, here's the rules to tipping. Well, that's just like when I go to a restaurant, they're not gonna tell me how to tip, I'll tell me how to tip, so. And that's totally up to you. What are the times? Uh, a lot of guides do five hours, six hour, half day, three quarter day, full day. And what does that mean? A full day to you might be four hours, somebody else it might be 24 hours. Um, is it dock to dock times? Uh, me personally, I'm not a clock watcher. And I'll always tell people that when you go to hire me, uh, I'll say, listen, my six hours is six plus hours. It could turn into seven. It could turn into six and a half. If I'm having a good time, I'm, I'm having a good time. Uh, expectations. Um, are we guaranteed to have a good time, this and that? Uh, and that goes back to, uh, are we guaranteed to catch fish? Uh, no fish, no pay. Unfortunately, they're animals and you have no control over their behavior. I don't know your skill levels. I can't force them to eat. I can lead a horse to water, but I can't force it to drink. Or, I'm sorry, I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make it drink. 
I've been in situations where I've seen thousands of fish 10 feet in front of the boat and you put whether it's artificial live, a fly in front of them and they just don't eat. That's something that's quite called fishing and not catching. The guides that offer the no fish, no pay policy, eh, either they'll sit up front and they'll fish for you and I've seen this happen, it's a shame. They'll, unless you want to do that, if you tell me captain fish for me then hand me the rod after you hook up okay I prefer not to do that or I'll see them take you somewhere and they'll catch little tiny bait fish or something technically that's a fish now if they say hey I guarantee you'll catch a, a world record fish that's between you and them that's that's a brave move and a business end of it so we're all fishing we've all gone fishing it's fishing um, it's like gambling you're not guaranteed to win uh, there's always a great chance of it, especially out here, or else I wouldn't be doing this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what do they supply? What does a guide supply? Does he supply all the licenses, tackle? Um, me personally, I supply bottled water, so on and so forth. What comes with the charter? Uh, and anything on that side, ask. You know, if you have certain questions, do you supply lunch, dinner, food, whatever? Uh, what's your deposit policy? How much do you require? What forms of payment do you take? Um, you know, we live in a day and age of credit card transactions, this and that. Most of them do. Uh, cash is always, you know, pe I don't know if too many people that take cash or don't take cash. It may be for a safety reason. Uh, what's the refund policy? If all of a sudden I have to cancel on you, you know, is it due to, is it due to weather? Do we cancel due to mechanical problems? You know, ask these questions. Each one's unique. Uh, um, what is the policy for weather? Do you take us out? Personally, I'm not taking you out there if it's going to be dangerous and there's a chance for loss of life or limb. That's just crazy. Uh, I want you to have a good time. I want it to be a good weather experience. Um, but I can't wave a magic wand and make every day be epic, perfect blue skies. And nobody can. Um, we're realists. We live in a day and age where we have no control over the weather. But what's your policy on weather if we have to cancel due to rain or, or whatever? Um, being a licensed captain, my first responsibility is to your safety. Uh, what type of tackle do you use? Fly fishing, spin fishing, light tackle, heavy tackle? Do I have to supply tackle? I personally supply all the licenses, tackle. Um, if you want to fly fish, we'll fly fish. If you want to spin fish, conventional, we'll do that or both. Um, what type of fishing? Uh, sight fishing, flats fishing, what type of fishing? You know, there's trolling, bait fish, chumming. Uh, you know, uh, live bait, artificial bait. So, you know, that's that's kind of a broad term there too, uh, with the tackle, what type of fishing, so on and so forth. Uh, do you, are we allowed to keep fish? Um, do you clean fish? Do you ship fish back? Uh, so on and so forth. Um, what time do we meet? What time do we start? How far away are you? Uh, after we're off the charter, is there anywhere to go eat? Uh, should we stay in a hotel somewhere around there? What types of, uh, what's your, um, do you have safety equipment? Tell me what your reputation is. Uh, um, if you want, ask, ask your guide or captain, your outfitter, say, hey, listen, I'm curious. I'd like to talk to one of your past clients. And I know that you probably can't give me their number, but here's my phone number. Excuse me. Can you email them or e have them email me and, uh, and see if they'd be willing to talk to me? Um, I've got a testimonial page, uh, two of them on my website. You can go there and basically what I do there is when a client emails me and tells me the experience, I copy and paste that as verbatim from their email directly to there um, with no changes. I don't alter it. Uh, how long have they been in business? Um, website. We live in a day and age of technology to where you can pretty much go to a person's website, a uh, business's website, whether it's what I do or anything, and get a feel of what type of business they run by looking at their website. Uh, it, I, I can tell, you know, is their boat clean? If you look at a guy's boat and it looks like a catastrophic mess, how do they run their business? How do they run their their charters and all that. Um, I've always said a clean boat speaks a lot, you know. And uh, basically, that is it in a nutshell. Uh, the times out there, the dock to dock times, uh, I see, you know, charters where they'll say, we leave this dock at 7 a.m., we're back to this dock for five hours, exactly 12. Go over that kind of stuff, because uh, like with me, I offer a few different charters. Um, and, you know, I understand that uh, it takes a wear and tear on people. 
Um, rain gear is another thing to ask about. Uh, I used to supply rain gear for people just in case we live in Florida it sprinkles it might rain here and there and it got to the point that you know I'd have to bring every size out there um, I'm an average built person but what if somebody's extra small or extra big I can't buy 10,000 pairs of rain gear so you know find out what the weather's gonna be uh, other than that in a nutshell that's pretty much it um, I think the most important thing I can tell you is should you have questions and you're hiring a guy, you're spending a lot of money, ask them whatever you feel you need to ask them. They are there for you. So do not hesitate not to ask them anything. Uh, the worst that could happen is they either can't answer or don't have an answer or just, you know, then you move on or you decide from there. Uh, they're there for you. You, you, they work for you. So until then, this is Captain Drew Cavanaugh with Florida Inshore Fishing Charters and Mosquito Lagoon Site Fishing Charters located here in Oak Hill, Florida, and have a great day, and thank you.